Hi guys, Sandy here. Today we are making a cute little dog, but not just any cute little dog. We are making a cute little dog out of leftover quilt blocks. <laughs> That's right, I am fighting the distache fight and this is a really cool way to do it. So are you ready? Let's do this. Okay, so we're making a patchwork dog that can be used as a toy. You know, it will be totally safe for kids. It can also be used as a decor because it really is a pillow. <laughs> now, is it too early to say that this is a great Christmas present? I have told you before I've been known to start Christmas projects in July or August so now feels totally acceptable to me you know you need to plan these things out if you want to have time to sew stress-free and sewing stressed is not something I'd recommend oh boy I could tell you stories <laughs> now you can choose to make this the simpler version you know with a simple fabric pattern for the front and the back of your dog or you can make it a patchwork version with squares or strips you know that will look awesome too and I actually have one when I was practicing see something like this with the squares you can also make the strips whatever you say but because I really really want to use my leftover quilt blocks that's what I'll be using this time so why leftover quilt blocks well because in the 11 months since I've started this channel we've been doing this for 11 months now I've lost count of how many quilt blocks we've made together but I am very well aware of how much space they're taking up in my sewing space and if you think about it, it's a vicious circle, really, because I am using uh, scraps to make quilt blocks because I want to destash the scraps. So now my scrap pile is going down, but my quilt block pile is going up. And since they all live in the same space, in my very small sewing space, it's taking up a lot of room and it is becoming a problem. So I'm either making the biggest sample quilt known to man, or I'm making small projects like this one. <laughs> so fully expect, you know, quilt block projects in the future. I just picked couple of quilt blocks. These are from the um, half square triangle variant video I made. I think there were two of them if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I have plenty, plenty of quilt blocks. Uh, let's pick which ones we'll be using. I think we'll need four. Four should be more than enough. I like this one a lot, you know, stars. I like this one too. Lots of colors and we have, you know, matching fabrics which is also a good thing uh, let's see so these two I think will look great mm, this is a little too blue for me a little too pink this one is a little too in your face this one I like because it's kind of similar to that one and maybe this to bring on the greens you know we will be you know once we're finished we will only use a small portion of these because it will be cut in the shape of a dog but uh, yeah I think these four are pretty cute and I think we'll go with these okay so this is my front nice and pressed ah, looking so cute and this is the back I have chosen for my patchwork dog a really cute starry light blue that will work great with the colors I have picked for the front. So now what we need to do is to cut the dog shape. And I have this template <laughs> that I have used for many many years. It does not look very good. Uh, it looks, yeah, I used it from leftover paper or something. This is the template I have used over the years to make the dogs I sell in my Etsy shop. So yeah, this is the template I usually use, but today I figured we'll just make our own. So exactly the way I made this really professional looking one. <laughs> hey, it works, okay? And I made this 15 by 11 inch grid that is more than enough for our dog, as you can see. Here's what we need to know. Half of this is our head, okay? So I have the tape here, which is a pity but it won't stop me from making this. But it doesn't go all the way down here. Well, it actually could, but I think I'm going to make it stop maybe an inch and a half. Hmm. Maybe, yeah. We'll stop it here, I think. So, all we need to do about the head is round the front, okay? So this is our head and then it goes here, the little neck and then it goes all the way down and that is the chest of our dog. Well actually, yeah, no, I think I'm going to go a little bit inwards, half an inch or so. Mm, don't know if this is too much. 
Okay, what the heck? So, so we have a four and a half inch head that's like seven and a half inches across, and then the rest of the body is six and a half down and three and a half, something like that, in. Okay, so our head goes like this, it goes here and it goes down here. For our tail, I don't want it to be as tall as the head, so I'm going to make it like, mm, yeah, like an inch or so. Yeah, that would be good. So I guess something like this. So the head goes down here and this, these are the back of the dog. And now I have to decide if I want, because here's the thing, when you're deciding the measurements, you, you have to know that you have half an inch as a seam allowance, right? Because we're using a quarter of an inch foot. So a quarter of an inch all around this, okay? So this may look big, but once you go, you know, half an inch in, it's not as big as you may think. Now I think I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I think I'll regret it if I make it this wide. So let's cut it right there. This isn't going to be very straight, okay? Don't expect your dog to look this, you know, for these curves to be this crisp. That's never gonna happen. You know, the, the fabric will round everything up, but um, for the template, you want it to be as crisp as possible. Okay, now to go down. I am just going to go all the way down. This is the back leg. So we'll make the front leg pretty much the same. So this is our front leg. And now we are going to join these together for the belly of our dog. And there we have it. Our dog template is complete. Now we need to cut it and here we have it guys so now we're going to cut the back and the front of our dog back sides together okay if we do it exactly the way we are going to use it it will save us a lot of trouble and a couple of mistakes we may do along the way so let's keep this really really simple now another major thing to consider is that they need to be as close to the same possible size as you possibly can because if one is bigger than the other you will struggle to finish and i'll explain what i mean in a while okay <laughs> You know what would be a really good idea? Save us time and the probability of something going seriously wrong. We could just pin this whole dog to our front. Oh, look at that, the exact size we needed. And we just cut it all together and that will give us the assurance that it is in fact symmetrical that it is in fact the exact same size. I don't do this very often because I don't really trust my cutting skills all that much, but for this, and only for this, I think it is the best course of action because we really, really, really need these to be as similar as possible. And when I explain to you why, I think you'll find that this is the better decision. Although I am hurting a little bit by seeing how much of the quilt blocks I will be wasting. Okay, so let's cut both layers together.
Okay, and there we go. Perfect. <laughs> now, important things to consider when doing this. Use the best possible fabric scissor to do it, okay? The fabric scissor, you know, that scissor that you only use to cut fabric and that can actually get a family member into really big trouble if they dare using it for something else. Look at that. Perfect. So here we have it, the back of our dog and the front of our dog, perfectly symmetrical, just as we wanted. I am very, very happy with this. Okay, now for our dog year. And this is a little secret of mine. I have never, ever made two dog ears alike. They're always different. And that's because I don't use a template. I just pick a fabric I like and go with it. Handmade items by definition are never exactly the same, but they can be very much alike. So I really enjoy making sure there is at least one detail that is just made on the go, you know, that differentiates one piece from the other. And for this project, it's the year. <laughs> now, since this is a pillow, we are only making one year, you know, for the front. But if you want to make it on both sides, just make two ears. So we need two sides for our ear, okay? We're going to sew it together. And uh, let's see, I think 2.5 inches wide is good enough. So it's 5.5 inches in total, and then we will fold. And for the length of, what do you say? Shall I make this a long ear dog? <laughs> I'd say 4.5 inches would be good. You know, without the seam, four inches, maybe five. Yeah, 5.5 by five, I like that, okay. So now we just fold this in half. All we need to do is draw this slight curve at the bottom, because you know, dog ears are round. Floppy ears particularly. And now we're just going to go ahead and sew. And now we just turn it inside out. And here is our dog's ear. Now we can press this, which is usually what I do. You can sew, you know, a seam around it to keep it in place. But you know, just pressing it is good enough because it will be attached to our dog. Now when we're attaching it to the front of our dog, we will want to be, uh, you know, close to the top border, but we will want to leave uh, a margin at the side because this is our seam allowance, right? And we don't want to sew our ear to the side of our dog. I have done that. I think I've done all the mistakes I can do, to be honest, over the years. Okay guys, now we need a strip of fabric of one of the fabrics we used on the patchwork or maybe the same fabric as the back as I'm doing or some other fabric, you know, whatever you'd like. Uh, we will need a 2.5 by 60 inch strip of fabric and this is what will join the front and the back and make our pillow. Because if you just sewn the two together, you know, the two sides together, it won't really be as nice. It will be a really small dog and it just won't look as good, okay? Now this is a little bit of a tricky step. It is the hardest thing you'll do for this dog, but it is totally worth it in my opinion. We will start with the front of our dog because it is the part we want to look nicer, right? <laughs> so here we go. Now, if you want, if you feel more comfortable marking, you know, uh, on all the curves and the corners, marking the quarter of an inch uh, seam so you will know when to stop, you can do that. I am not doing that. I think I can manage. Famous last words, we will see. So, you just leave a little bit of a seam allowance and we want to start at a quarter of an inch so about let me show you what a quarter of an inch looks like in a ruler it's something like this so yeah that tiny little bit that's where we want to start sewing and that's exactly what we'll do let's sew now you will want to keep your needle down because you will want to be able to move the dog around without losing your position okay this is important you will get very frustrated if you keep losing your position as you so 
I want to stop here. And I stop. I do one more. Stop. Looking good. Turn it around. Needle down so I can move. And I want to go right there. Okay, needle down, turn around again to go down. Now here, I want to go a quarter of an inch in. Yeah, turn it around again, turn the fabric. Now I'm doing this pretty quickly. You don't need to do this as fast as me, okay? You can do it as slowly, uh, take your time. It really is something that it's worth taking your time with because you really want to get this right. This needs to be, I'm not gonna say perfect, but it needs to be right. Okay, so I want to stop here. Get that guy a little bit more. One more, okay. Turn it around. Twist the fabric. And now I want to stop here. Okay, now we're going to sew over the ear. That's not right. And now comes the curvy part of our dog's face. And if you did that part slowly, you will want to do this one extra slowly, okay? We really need this shape to be round, as round as you can possibly make it, okay? We don't want a square face dog. Well, we could, you know, if it was like a boxer or something like that, but that's not really what we're going for here. So, we start turning it around, real slow. We are not in a hurry in any way. Doing it slow and steady. And now we are over the round part, and here is our neck. We lift up our guide. Oops, did I lift it too early? Because we want to go a quarter of an inch in. Okay, guys, now for the front, the chest of the dog. If it's a pattern fabric, it helps because you can say, okay, I want to stop at that star or I want to stop at that strip. That actually helps. <laughs> okay, now we turn. Front foot. Turn. Turn around again. Okay, now to close this little guy up, we are just going to put these two strips of fabric, line them up real nice, just like that. Make sure it's nice and straight. Yeah, looks pretty straight to me. And now we are going to close it and then trim off our excess. Okay, so we have sewn the front. It is looking good. Let's see how we did with the round shape. I like it. Let's see the tail. The tail is looking good. Let's see the back feet. The front also looking good. The head, yeah. I think we nailed it, guys. I really do. Make sure that there isn't any place where you may have missed, you know, the fabric. Make sure there are no openings. Like really check the seams at the back of the fabric because you don't want to find out that your seam is too short when you're stuffing it because it will rip. Or even worse, you know, when, you're, when you've already given it away as a present and it rips real easy because there was a shorter seam that should not have been this short. Okay guys, we are good to go. What do you think? <laughs> are you liking iDog so far? I think it's looking pretty, pretty cute. 
You know, this first part of this trip isn't really that complicated if I'm honest because the harder part is to add the strip to the back of the fabric and make it match. Meaning all these corners we've gone through, all these angles, all these sharp turns need to be straight and crisp on both sides and that can be really, really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why the front and the back of the dog need to be as similar as possible, you know, to make sure the strip turns and curves at the exact same places. I mean, yes, there are ways to compensate it if it doesn't, but it is a heck of a lot of work and it is just so much simpler to make sure they're all the same size. Now we'll start at the exact same place, the back leg, knowing that we won't be sewing all the way back like we did, okay? Because we need this gap to fill in our dog. We stuff it through here, okay? Also, a trick that I find really helps keep me situated is to pin all the major turns in the dog. That way, uh, you know, when I reach a certain point, I'll be able to say if I'm on the right track or if I may as well start over. Yes, I have made dogs over the years that were so incredibly askew that I just stopped, ripped the whole thing off and started again. Because that's what you'll get if you don't hit those corners right, a diagonal dog. Like one side is here and the other one is peeking left or right. It's kind of freaky and guess what <laughs> for that dog I showed you earlier I actually did that just for you to tell I mean look at this can you see and this one isn't really very as cute but can you see like for the head so this part stops here and this one starts stops there right can you see how diagonal this line is uh, the same thing for the back look at the legs so this one is actually, yeah, it's turned also, but I think I might have herded it <laughs> when I was stuffing it. So for the, for the tail, for example, it's the opposite thing. So the front stops here and the back stops there. Totally askew. Do you see? We do not want this, guys. We do not want this at all. This does not work. Cute dog and all. My pets will love sleeping on it. Not really something you would like to, you know, gift or make to sell or anything like that. If I wanted to correct it, I would push this down, I would sew here, but I would have to sew all the corners that were wrong. You may as well start over, okay? Or do it perfectly the first time. <laughs> so yeah, let's just make sure we've got these corners right. You just make sure that the, the fabric is aligned and you put a pin marking the corner and that way when you reach it, you can see if the corner of the fabric, of the back fabric, is actually going to match the corner of the front fabric. And that will tell you right away if you're doing good. Let's see what else. The, yeah, the head curve is also a good telltale sign. Um, and then, of course, the feet. You'd be surprised at how much of a difference you can make with this, this rounder shape. Like, you know, if, I, if here I had this seam, but if when I sew the second part it goes inwards or outwards, yeah, it can really uh, make a total difference in the size of the strip you have left. So once you reach these feet, they're already out of whack. So you don't want to do that. So here is the first. And now for the back one but you know if it's wonky uh, just at the back one I will not I will not change it <laughs> it's too late now I've done the whole thing so wish me luck and let's sew turn yeah this one looks good too Pretty perfect, pretty lined up. Yeah, liking that. Let's go. Nice.
Okay, so this is what we have. I can see some skewness immediately. <laughs> so let's just turn this inside out. Did not leave a lot of room. Makes it look, you know, straighter. But it is a lot more work. So if you can, make life easier for yourself and leave a bigger gap than I did. <laughs> Little ear. And here is our dog. <laughs> Okay guys, things are looking pretty great, don't want to jinx it, and now we're like two or three steps away from being finished. So first we need to fill our dog, and you can use foam pieces, you can use these tiny soft curls to fill it with, or you can just shred fabric and use that. And that's actually what I'll be using, some soft synthetic curls, and of course scraps left over from this project and a couple I did before because you know I do want to get rid of all the scraps however you should know that the more fabric you use uh, the harder the the pillow will be this makes it really soft you want it firm but soft and this uh, is the way to go <laughs> so teeny tiny hole we'll start with filling you know the the ends of the dog so the, the head the tail front leg and then we work our way back so let's start with our tail right here also be careful when you're filling you want you don't want it to be too rough because you know we don't want to warp the fabric and make it even more askew than it may already be. I have done that. I'll say, I'll admit that I have done that on occasion, you know, pushed so hard to fill in the gaps that I ended up warping the dog. It's like twisty. I did with that one actually, with the one I showed you earlier. I was kind of distracted thinking about all the steps I needed to show you guys and ended up being really hard on it. Look at that, a little face. Oh, it's a pinwheel in the face. That's kind of perfect. I love pinwheels. So the face is done, looking pretty cute with the pinwheels, I love it. Didn't do it on purpose, but I would totally would if I had thought about it. So now it's the body. Okay guys, I think this is good. Now we are going to close this gap and uh, this tiny little gap right here and you can do it either by hand or by machine. I have done both, but today I think I'm going to be closing it by hand. It's in the back, it's at the bottom. I think it won't show, it doesn't really show much, but uh, if you'd rather hide the seam, just sew it by hand and that is exactly what I'm going to do. So let me just insert this right here okay guys and here 
we go. This is our dog. Okay guys, so the dog is closed and tell me, what is this dog missing? An eye, of course. <laughs> now, if this isn't meant for children or pets to interact with, you can just add a cute button and be done with that. But I want to make this 100% safe, so I am using felt. One white circle of felt, one brown circle of felt, and a black one to finish our eye off. And now I'm going to sew it in place really, really quickly. Now we don't want the eye to be too in the front, okay? We want it to be smack, you know, in the middle of the face, after considering the ear, of course. We don't want it to get hidden by the ear or be too close to the ear. So just, I made it in the middle of our pinwheel, you know, X marks the spot, it really did. Just, you know, put it on top of your dog and play with it a little bit and see what feels right to you. Okay guys, and we are done. That's it, our dog is complete. Now, if you want to add other details to it, you totally can, like a collar or a scarf or a bow tie, that's up to you. I like mine just like so, really simple with a little ear. <laughs> so what do you say guys, how cute is this little dog? I love it and it has been ages since I did my last one, so I'm pretty happy to do it again for you. Thank you for doing this with me and I will see you really, really soon. Bye bye.